Okay, so in this tutorial, we'll be removing the green screen backing in a piece of video. So I already have this piece of video here that I'll be loading into After Effects. And I'll be dragging it down onto the new composition icon. Um, this video has deliberately been, well, messed up for the case of just seeing how you could uh, work around shadow areas, like we have them down here, to bright areas, like we have it on top of the green screen here where we have too much lighting. We also have a lot of reflections, for instance, in the table here, but also in this uh, coffee cup, as well as uh, the key light uh, effect that we'll be using um, has a bit of an issue uh, with very black clothing or in general, just black objects in the scene. Uh, they tend to become very um, noisy. But uh, in the effects and presets tab over here, type in key light and you'll find the under keying, the effect called key light 1.2. We'll be dragging that onto the footage. First of all, we want to select the screen color that we want to be working with. For this case, we want the, well, the medium green color that we can find. So somewhere in between. So we'll take the eyedropper tool over here. We'll be clicking the green backing somewhere in his shoulder region here, I would imagine. And it kind of removes the green screen all right, but we still have this highlighted area that has a, a bit of a color tint to it as well. If we click the uh, color over here, the color tab, it'll open up this screen color picker. If we start moving this green slider around, you can actually see how we start removing that background. However, we also start removing pieces of his clothing or his jacket. So we need to find a green that would fit this scene perfectly. And to make this more visible to us, we can actually go into the screen mat results. So first of all, I'll just click OK for this selection. Then I'll be selecting the screen mat under view over here which will give us the screen mat. So a black and white representation of what will be removed and what will stay in the scene. So if I again click the color tab here and I start moving the selection around, you can see how I uh, affect these uh, different selected areas that we have. In this case, I want to have the most perfect hair and the body and everything. And I'll kind of completely disregard the table down here because I know it has a lot of reflections which would probably have to be keyed out separately. In this case, we'll be selecting or creating a specific mat for that area. But again, this depends on the specific shot that you're working on. So select the color that fits your scene or your picture, click OK. So if you go back to final result, you can down here activate or toggle the transparency grid. So on and off. Right now, well, he is pretty transparent. So we can see through his jacket, we can even see through parts of his hair and everything. And we want to fix that, of course. We can't run around being transparent all the time. So over here, if you unfold screen mat, we have these different clipping values that we can adjust. Clipping values work a bit like when you adjust levels in Photoshop. So you can amp up different values or amp them down. So you can basically clamp down how much will stay and how much will get removed. It's normally better to actually go into the uh, screen mat to view these results because sometimes it can be hard to see if the transparency has been completely removed. So under view, back into screen mat. If you start out adding a bit of this clip black, you can see how we actually separate these table areas and everything. We even had a, we might have had a bit of a streak up here because the green screen wasn't completely even. So a rule of thumb that I tend to say is that, well, we shouldn't go anywhere above 20 in this region, basically because we will start having or getting too hard edges, specifically about uh, around um, hair and we'll, we'll basically move, uh, remove the fine detail. And well, we want to keep the fine details, of course. In the clip white selection, take the value 100 and drag it downwards. And you can see how you actually make the silhouette of him appear more white. Up here, we still have a bit of uh, grayish um, tone in his hair. So we might go a bit further, but again, not too far. I also, again, once again, tend to say, please don't go below 70, which I'm actually at 69 right now, because once again, you will actually start having two hard edges um, and they will be just horrible to look at uh, once you play back the video, the definition of helmet hair. Next up, we have to create a mask or a mat specifically for the table and the coffee mug and everything here. We will be using the footage as it is currently. So we'll be taking it and we want to create a separate mat, so a separate composition that will act as a mat for our primary keyer or primary layer. To do this, we will duplicate this layer. So either Control D or Edit Duplicate with the 
top layer selected, you can right click it and choose pre-compose or you can, if you have an older version of After Effects, go to layer and then choose pre-compose. So situated up here. You also have the shortcut Control shift c So click pre-compose and this will ask you once again, what do you want to do with this pre-composition? I want to call mine matte because it'll act as a matte and I will move all my attributes into the new composition. The reason why I choose this is that I want my key light effect and if I had any masks and stuff, I want to move all that into my new composition. I don't want it to just stay out here on the composition that will be created because that'll actually just not change anything. So move all attributes, click OK. And if we open the new matte layer, it should look almost identical to what we just had. But now we have a composition that's called matte within the composition called key. So in the composition called matte here, we'll click the toggle switches and modes so that we see these multiple different selection buttons here. We have one called effects or FX. If you click that, you'll remove any effect that has been applied to this layer of footage. In this case, making it look like the raw footage from the camera. But this is what we want because we actually want to mask out this table here right now with a white solid. The reason why we choose the white solid is so that we can get it to match the rest of this white silhouette of him. Um, and then later on, we'll be removing this background as well. We'll be creating kind of a custom mat for this shot here. So turn it off, go to layer, new, choose solid or control Y. And of course, make it white in the color selection. Click OK. Well, it's a bit hard to see the table right now because of the white, but the beautiful thing is you can still actually uh, draw mats or masks on uh, layers that have been set to visibility hidden. So if you click the eye down here, so to hide that layer, but still have it selected, click the pen tool. We will actually be creating a mask on that layer, even though we can't see it. Um, I tend to do a pretty rough selection right off the bat. And then I go in and select the specific curvatures um, so that I adjust the mask uh, so that it follows the curvature of the table and uh, even animation. As soon as you have the rough shape, I select the Convert Vertex tool up here. As soon as you click and drag one of these points, you will convert it into a bezier um, that you can adjust. And if you hold down Control, you'll get this black arrow so that you can actually move that point around. Um, you can even go in and take these specific bezier's by themselves so that you create a bezier corner. And then it's just about adjusting this so that it matches the curvature of the table. So pretty good, not perfect, but doesn't need to be for this tutorial right now. You'll probably make it a, a bit more detailed and more specific in your case. I'll be turning on the visibility down here so that we now can see the white solid that we just had. We'll have a pretty hard edge around the corners here, which of course we don't want because, well, in normal video footage, if for instance we look at his arm here, we have kind of a fade effect from the foreground element to the background element. We, we, we want to bring that back in this table here. So we will select the white solid and hit F on our keyboard, which will open up the mask feather and we'll feather it just a bit, maybe even only about four or five pixels. Anything more than that will start to look blurry and we'll start bringing the background back and yeah, well, we don't want that. So now we can turn back on the key.mp4 effects and as you see, the table is now completely white as if we had keyed it perfectly but without using any keying plugin. We'll be doing the exact same thing with the background uh, as to remove this, uh, well, basically garbage. So we'll be creating a garbage mat. So once again, go to layer, say new, solid, make it black this time, and then click OK. Once again, turn off the visibility. So we don't need to actually remove or make him visible again like before because, well, we know that we can just create a mask behind the table because we can make this white layer that we have here, we can make that overlap the black solid. So we can take the black solid, select the pen tool, create a mask that goes just straight through the table up here and around and back down. And if we turn back on the black solid, it'll of course go above the white table. So just switch positions of these two layers, and we have our finished mat. So if you scrub through it, you can even see it move around. So it's important to know that right now it's a very short clip that we have here, and he's basically standing still. Had I, for instance, moved this segment over here, I might have cut off his fingers, for instance, because we still key them out. The white solid only 
takes out these well solid elements that are in the scene and not his hands. So that's something to look out for. Uh, here you might even need to do some mask animation. So if we go back into the key layer here, right now we can turn off the visibility of matte up here and go back into key because we actually want this key to only work as a despill layer, which means that we only want this layer to remove the green that might have spilled onto, for instance, his face here. By the way, I just changed the view to the source, uh, a bit like just turning off the effects. Also in the table here, that won't get removed by the, um, by the mask we just created because key light doesn't see it as a area that it needs to despill. It sees it as an area that it needs to remove. So what we need to do here is go to view and select the final result, set the clip black to zero, the clip white to one. Now with the screen gain selected up here, so 100, move it downwards until you get a almost gray backing. It just needs to be, well, as gray as possible. Pretty satisfied with this. What I wanna do now is I wanna tell this layer that it needs to use the matte composition up here as the track matte or as the matte layer. Toggle switches and modes, switches between these uh, drop down selections and these buttons. We want the drop downs and this called track matte. We have these four options to choose from or rather five, no track matte and then alpha matte and luma matte and an inverted version of each. Alpha matte would go for the transparency in the matte layer, but we don't have any transparency in the matte layer. We've created a luma matte because we only work with black and white. So we want to select a luma matte of the layer called matte. And this removes the background that we had. This will bring the green in the shot here down because it still works with the despill on the key.mp4 layer. So if I RAM preview this, as soon as the video is playing back here, you can see that there is a lot of uh, noise still in his jacket area here, also a bit in the table. However, this is as far as we probably can push key light. So the reason why I showed you this despill version of the key light effect is because not everyone has the newest version of After Effects. The newest version of After Effects CC ships with a advanced spill cleaner or spill suppressor. Um, which we'll be using now. I will turn off key light for the key.mp4 layer, which will reveal the original green hell that is our video. Then I'll, in my effects and presets over here, I will write spill. And under keying down here, we'll have the advanced spill suppressor that we can just drag and drop onto key.mp4 down here. Like magic, it'll remove the green that we just had. And if I ramp preview, Still some noise, maybe a bit better than what key light could do. Our green screen has been removed, well, fairly nicely. We even have details left in the hair up here so that we have a semi-transparency there. So sometimes you would probably have to duplicate some layers. Uh, so key out the head by itself, maybe an arm, um, depending on how much your subject moves around, moves his hands, um, maybe even moves things on the table which has happened multiple times when doing these shots. So move the coffee, coffee mug around so that the, the mat had to change along with that as well. So that's all of these different things that you need to look out for, but something that we will cover in a later tutorial. So thanks for watching.